What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Profile Builder tutorial for you. So this weekend I was going back and looking at some of my old models that I'd done and uh, just kind of thinking about a better way to create things like construction fencing or like silt fence for stormwater. So, but you could really apply this to any kind of fencing and uh, just thinking about some ways that we could do that using Profile Builder. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're gonna do um, in this case, and first of all, if you want more information about Profile Builder, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. Um, so there's more information about that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a couple different kinds of fencing using just a single plane. So not making like a whole bunch of fence members or anything like that. I wanted to make something more lightweight that you could kind of save in a library. So for silt fence, we're going to assume this is going to be about two and a half feet high. So what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the lesser known um, things that you can do with Profile Builder, which is create a profile using just an edge. And so what I mean is we're just going to come in here and we're going to draw a line and we're going to go ahead and make this two foot six inches long. And so we've talked a bunch about creating profiles in the past with filled in shapes like this one, but one of the things a lot of people don't know is you can also just select an edge like this and you can add a profile that way. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to click the plus button and we're going to create a new profile. Um, and you'll notice I selected this edge first. We're going to create a new profile and we're just going to call this silt fence and hit OK. And so now what that means is if I was to click in here, you can see how it's going to use this edge to create a profile in here. And so one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and probably edit our placement point so that it's at the bottom middle of this item. So now if I click, it's going to place this based on the bottom rather than the middle of my silt fence. And so the other thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and apply a material to this. And so what we need to do in order for that to work is we need to have the material that we want to use active inside of our inside of our model. So I'm just going to come in here and for this one I'm just going to add like a black material to this face. And so now the black material should show up on this list. So we'll just select color M09, that's gonna be black. Now, whenever we create this profile, it's gonna apply that black material to it. And you can see how that has a height of uh, two foot six inches, which is what we set that to. So now, what we need to do is we need to draw our stakes. And so basically the way stakes work is stakes sit on the back side of your silt fence in order to hold it up. And so we're gonna take our silt fence and we're just gonna draw a little square right here. And the stakes aren't very big, so let's go ahead and just call this maybe like two by two. And so what we're doing is we're basically generating a stake object that's gonna sit inside of your model that we're then gonna repeat using the assemblies dialog. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna extrude this up and we're gonna assume it's probably gonna extend about six inches higher than my silt fence. So we're just gonna push pull this to a height of three feet. And then I'm just gonna triple click on that and I'm gonna make it a component and we're just gonna call this silt fence stake and hit create. So now that's in here as a component. And so what we wanna do is we want to now create an assembly that combines the silt fence and the stake. So to do that, we're just gonna open the assembly dialog and we have a new assembly in here. We can go ahead and we can call this, actually probably what we wanna do is we wanna click the plus button. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna call this silt fence. And so right now there's nothing in this uh, there's nothing in this assembly. So we need to add the profile member, which is going to be the thing that gets extruded. That's going to be our edge. And then we need to add components. So we're going to start by just clicking the plus button and we're just going to pick from our model. And probably what we need to do is we need to add we need to add a copy of the silt fence into our model. So now that I have this in my model, I can go in here and I can click pick for model and I can select that. And so we've basically told it that the thing that we want it to extrude is gonna be the silt fence. So now my assembly contains silt fence. And so what we need to do now is we need to add the repeating component in here. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on the button for component and we're just gonna click the plus button. And so because we have a copy of this component in here, we can just select it. So we wanna add this component, so we're just gonna click on pick from model and we're gonna click on this stake right here. 
So you can see how what this does now is this is actually repeating a copy of this stake over and over again. And so probably the spacing on this is gonna be more like six feet. So we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna set our spacing to every six feet. And so now if I was to take this and click on this button down at the bottom of the page um, to add this assembly or build this assembly, You can see how this is coming in here, and this is basically taking these stakes and placing them um, at every six feet while also extruding your silt fence profile along here as well. And one thing that's a little bit annoying in here is at the moment, this is uh, giving us some Z fighting in here because this face and this stake are right against each other. And so SketchUp doesn't know which one of these to um, show, which is why you get the flashing back and forth between these. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these and we're just gonna set the left right offset to something tiny. So maybe like um, negative 16th of an inch or something like that. And so I've changed my left right offset on this. And so now I'm just gonna select this and I'm gonna apply that attribute. And you can see how what that did is that moved this back a 16th of an inch. So now there's a gap in there. So now when we add our silt fence um, on our site, we don't have the issue of that Z fighting in here anymore. And so the only other thing we might wanna do is we might want to take one of these components like this one and maybe apply like a wood material to it. So it doesn't really matter which one in this application, I'll probably just use the wood OSB um, just to make these look a little bit more like wood. Um, obviously if you're adding silt fence to a model, it probably doesn't need to look ultra photorealistic. But what you could do with this assembly now is you could save that um, inside of your library just by clicking clicking the save button and then you could have this in your library for whenever you have a job site. And then the nice thing about this assembly is let's say you have a big site kind of like this one, like something like this. And then inside of that, let's say you had a job area. So let's say your job area looked kind of like this. Well, all you would have to do in order to add silt fence around it is just draw your path and then just use the build along path function in order to add that silt fence in here really quickly. And so one thing you might have noticed about this is this is putting the uh, stakes on the wrong side. Um, so if that's something that bothers you, if you wanted the stakes to show up on the other side, what you could do is you could select this object and just adjust this to mirror left, right. And so all that's gonna do is that's gonna flip this left and right, and then you can click on the apply assembly attributes and now those stakes are gonna be on the other side in here. So you could save this uh, assembly in order to quickly create silt fence to go inside your storm water plans or something like that. And so we've got a little bit more time. So let's say that we wanted to do the same thing with construction fence. So let's say we wanted to build this up either with like a chain link material or maybe like the orange construction fencing. Well, you could do the same thing where you could draw an eight foot Let's say we wanted our fence to be eight feet high. You could draw an eight foot line like this and just add a profile. And we'll just click in here to add this new one and we would just call this construction fence chain link. And so we would do the same thing where we would set our insertion point to the bottom middle like this. And then the other thing we would do is we would add whatever material we wanted to apply to this plane. So for this one, I would go into my landscaping, fencing, and vegetation, and I might find this fencing chain link material and apply that to this face. So you can see how this applies that chain link material in here um, to this face. Well, now we could find this down here in this list and set this profile so that it has a chain link material applied to it. So now if I add that in here, I'm gonna get my chain link material to a height of eight feet. And so now we would just do the same thing where we need to draw whatever our vertical posts are gonna look like and create them as components. So we've got our construction fence profile in here. Now let's say that we were to come in here and let's say this was gonna be a circle. So maybe it's a two inch pipe or something like that. So we could push pull that up to a height of eight feet. That seems a little big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's say it was a one inch pipe. So let's say we were to push pull this up to a height of eight feet. And then I'll go ahead and draw a rectangle using the about center function. So I just drew a rectangle 
and uh, I found the center point of this object and then I tap the control key that's going to allow me to draw a rectangle based on this center point so now I can come in here and let's say this was going to be some kind of a long foot plate or something like that we could make it two feet long comma six inches wide and then we could push pull this up and obviously you can get more detailed with this um, depending on what this is actually going to look like for you but let's say we were to push pull this up three quarters of an inch and then select the whole thing and make it a component so we could just call this construction fence post so now we would just do that same thing we did before we would open the assembly dialog and just add a new assembly and just call this one construction fence chain link and so we would add our profile member so we would just click the plus pick from model and select our fence and then we would add a component we would just do the plus pick from model and we would select our fence post and then one thing I find helpful is to go ahead and add a copy of that assembly in here so that I can kind of look at this and see uh, how this is going to look and so like one thing we need to fix is we need to fix where our profile for our fence is inside of this uh, inside of this image so the way that we would do that is we would go back to our profile member and we would set a left right offset of whatever the difference is between this point and this point so we would click here and go over to here and it's about 11 inches so I would set my left right offset to we'll try negative 11 inches and then we'll just select this and click this button right here to apply that change to our object and so you can see how what this does is this now gives me this construction fencing in here that then gets applied inside of this model and so then once you get this fencing looking the way that you want you might not want it to look this way but you could change it around but then you could do the same thing that we did over here so let's say your actual construction area was more of a rectangle like this you could just select that select that perimeter and then apply this so that your construction fence gets added around the perimeter really quickly and then you could save this as another library item in there as well and so one thing that's a little weird on this is your junctions are um, getting offset a little bit so I'm not sure I'm not a hundred percent sure why that is it really doesn't matter because we just have to know enough to fix it so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the difference between this point and the point of this pipe right here and so all you really need to know is that there's a difference of about one foot two inches so this is off by about one foot two inches so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our junction setback um, which is adjusting the way this is getting set back from the corners or the edges where this turns the corner and we're just gonna change this to negative um, one foot two inches and then once we do that we'll just select this we'll click apply assembly attributes I think it might need to be positive one foot two inches there we go and so what that's going to do is that's going to give you a little bit of weird offset on the corner there um, those aren't lining up exactly but generally speaking I'm okay with it again because we're just modeling out um, construction fence really quickly and you shouldn't be paying too much attention to these corners you can definitely mess around with that setting a little bit to see if you can get a little bit better result um, but you can definitely use that to kind of fix the way that those junctions work inside of profile builder so that's where I'm gonna end this video leave a comment below and let me know what you thought can you think of some other uses for profile file builder i just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what i'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys